We all belong outside. We're drawn to nature. Whether it's the recorded sounds of the ocean we doze off to, or the succulents that adorn our homes, nature makes all of our lives, well, better. Despite all this, we often go about our busy lives removed from it. But the outdoors is closer than we realize. With All Trails, you can discover trails nearby and explore confidently. With offline maps and on trail navigation, download the free app today and make the most of your summer with All Trails. It's Monday. It's August 26th. And the word of the day is cackle fart, which is an old timey word for egg. <laughs> Used in a sentence. It's okay to count your chickens and cackle farts before and after they're hatched. It makes you wonder if their understanding of eggs or farts was the one that was misguided. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, either way, we do advise you against trying out the pickup line, how do you like your cackle farts in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> I'm no illusion. I'm Michael Marshall. Baked in a Dutch oven. I'm <laughs> Ethan Wright. And broadcasting <laughs> delayed from America's Far Center and across the pond, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, we find out how much it costs to get Nigel Farage out of your town. <laughs> RFK puts an old bicycle on top of his campaign so nobody will know how it died. <laughs> <laughs> and Donald Trump is going to be hosting a treason-based awards yes! show. Yes! Yes. <laughs> but first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight, are my fellow skeptic rats, no illusions, and Michael Marshall. Gentlemen, before we get into the headlines, let's start an internet fight, you know, for fun. What's the best sequel? Go. Oh, I don't think there's any need to start a fight about it. It's obviously Leprechaun 5, Leprechaun in the Hood. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> I'd say uh, Malcolm X. I never saw the previous nine, but it must have been really great to get Denzel that deep in the franchise. <laughs> Yeah, I enjoyed Henry V by Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah, no, the first four were kind of meh. Yeah. In our lead story tonight, it's been a really fun week. It has. The Democratic National Convention was a big success, and Donald Trump continued being a giant flailing pile of failure. <laughs> He's flailure, the human being. I'm calling him <laughs> that from now on. On the positive side, we got a truly fantastic speech from Michelle Obama an almost as fantastic speech from Barack Obama and viewership numbers for the convention that easily beat the Republican one in July. And on, well, also the positive side, the schadenfreude side, we got Trump having a panicky meltdown about being attacked during the convention, despite claiming he wasn't watching the event that he was ranting about. Yep. Yep. You no, know, he's not watching the convention. That ketchup was already there. It was. Um, <laughs> I mean, both those things might well be true. Yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Very possible. So the highlight of the convention last week was Michelle Obama. Yes. She absolutely slayed it with her speech. It's about 20 minutes long, and I highly recommend watching it if you missed it. It's a masterclass on how to perform inspiring political oratory. But the highlight for me was the roasting of Donald Trump. The oratory was amazing, but like, I'm a roasty guy, and she <laughs> killed it. She weaves it in like a pro, too, the roasting part. Just like a seamless transition from speech at the UN Security Council straight to Friars Club, back and forth. So good. My favorite moment was when she took Trump's insane remark about black jobs and turned it against him beautifully, saying, quote, Who's going to tell him that the job he's currently seeking might just be one of those black jobs? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he might think it's a black job now, but up until recently, he thought it was one of those Indian jobs. But then suddenly the job turned black. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, and Michelle's was the single best convention speech that I have ever seen. Right. And it's Perfect. worth noting, like her husband's keynote speech at the 2004 convention was so good. They let him be president at the next <laughs> one. Right. <Yeah. laughs> so Michelle's absolutely amazing speech was followed by Barack. And despite being literally one of the greatest orators in the history of politics, he never had a chance of topping Michelle. And he knew it. He came on stage and introduced himself as 
the only person stupid enough to speak after Michelle Obama. Uh-huh. <laughs> but he did a pretty great job, too, especially with a dick-sized joke about Donald Trump, including <laughs> a beautiful improvised visual bit I, that he did. No way. I do not believe that that was improvised. It was too perfect to be Oh, improvised. it was too perfect, yeah. He did that in a mirror like 360 times. <laughs> so I, many I times, don't yeah. I don't, he, did, he, uh, he spent the last three weeks in a mirror like moving his hands back and forth going, oh, if I go, okay, so I do that. Yeah, like Eli here. practicing a card trick. That's how much time yeah, he yeah. put into that in front of a mirror. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. Should I do it like, ah, oh, that's too generous probably. I'll just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, but according to his speechwriters, it was improvised. They didn't have it planned, but, you know, he might have had it planned anyway. Yeah. So he said at that moment, quote, here's a 78 year old billionaire who has not stopped whining about his problems since he rode down his golden escalator nine years ago. It's been a constant stream of gripes and grievances that's actually getting worse now that he's afraid of losing to Kamala. There's the childish nicknames, the crazy conspiracy theories, this weird obsession with crowd sizes end quote and that's when he moved his hands apart and then closed it together and he did a perfect double take at the you know invisible shrinking trump penis between his hands for his <laughs> physical bit oh god the timing of that double take like, along with just like the exact right note of derision in his voice uh-huh. oh god that was absolutely masterful like when he went into politics the world was robbed of possibly one of the greatest comedy performers of all time like yes. okay yeah sure absolutely leader of the free world first black president that's all well and good but he would have crushed <laughs> it on the stand-up circuit <laughs> it's not too late marsh Barack? Lost <laughs> potential. It, Stupid. No, no. Presidency. If you're listening, if you're listening, Barack, we, if you ever want a guest on Gam, you know we will open this door for oh, you. Oh man, that would be the. <laughs> <laughs> I would make the squee noise for two hours. Yep, you totally. My would. entire <laughs> contribution. So, the response from Trump to this whole thing was an absolute delight. He made a huge deal again about claiming that he wasn't going to be watching the stupid failing Democrats in their convention, Mm. (laughs) but he's a giant liar and also incredibly stupid. So he watched himself getting roasted by Kamala Harris on Thursday night and he got whipped up into a tantrum. So he, you know, threw that plate of well done steak and ketchup at the wall and he started posting real time retorts. On Truth Social. Every 30 seconds. (laughs) As if Kamala Harris had an account on Truth Social (laughs) and was looking at her phone during the speech. We'd be mad. We'd have to, like, come back. At one point, he wrote in all caps, is she talking about me? Yes. And people on Truth Social explained... Yeah, man, she's yeah, talking no, she's about you. <laughs> That's what she's doing, yeah. She used your uh, name. He also asked, in all caps, where's Hunter? You know, like he was the <laughs> near 90-year-old grandpa in the nursing home needing to be reminded. You know, he needed someone to pat his hand and say, you know, Hunter was the son of the other guy. You remember the other guy? Oh. It was his son. <laughs> and then, like, wheel him over to the window so he could look at his favourite tree, which is the one that he imagines Mike Pence hanging from. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then... Moments after Kamala Harris finished her speech, he called Fox News and they patched him in during their live coverage. (laughs) And he spent the next 10 minutes ranting like a lunatic. It was like real big, I drive a Dodge Stratus energy. Like, you don't talk to me that way. But like if Will Ferrell was a (laughs) neo-Nazi. The Fox anchors tried to interrupt him so many times just to like help him out. But Trump talked right over them. And that's when a producer at Fox started whisper screaming to the anchors, shut it the fuck down. He lost five (laughs) points in every swing state in the last 30 seconds. I don't know how that's even possible. (laughs) So they finally got a sentence in with Trump and they told him, sorry, but we've run out of time for talking to you. During a live show yes. on our news network. Yeah, our news network, which is basically dedicated to you as well. Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, apparently, there was also beeping sounds throughout the call because he was like accidentally pressing buttons on his phone while yes. speaking. But can we be absolutely sure it wasn't Melania sending an SOS in Morse code? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no, just think about that for a second. Just think about how irately you have to be fucking talking on a modern phone to accidentally press buttons over and over again. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, like, if you're not driving, just hold your phone up and imagine what you would have to do with your face to push buttons multiple times <laughs> as you scroll. 
I cheek dialed somebody. I was so mad. <laughs> and just circling back to the dick joke really quick. I know we're not supposed to body shame people, including stuff about penis size. But yes, we are when it's Donald Trump. Sure. Yes, we are. No, what am I? I'm, I'm like doing decorum for Donald Trump. Absolutely not. No rules for him. And most importantly, as a gentleman of Irish heritage with a very relevant lived experience about this, I officially approve Barack Obama's. Well, there you go. You are welcome, my good friend, Barack Obama. That invite to Gamma is still open. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, Mint Mobile. L O L. There. Let's call it a text. Please don't send another random meme. My text plan is not unlimited. Hey, Heath. You send an angry text about how you refuse to participate in human connection again? <laughs> what? No. Well, yes, yes. But also, I'm getting killed on my texting fees, and I never got credit for my 10 rollover texts from last month. Well, okay, so first of all, when are you? Is the 90s whenever possible. Got it. But, but also, yeah. if you're looking to find a better deal on your cell phone service, why don't you just try Mint Mobile? Oh, what's Mint Mobile? It's a wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month. Sounds like a pretty good deal. It is. And so is Human Connection. You know, you know when you discover a new binge-worthy show or a great song and you want to share it with your friends so that they can experience just how awesome it is? Yeah, yeah, I guess. Well, that's kind of how it feels when you discover that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless service for $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. It's such an awesome deal that there's no way you can keep it to yourself. Yeah, I'm paying way more than that. Well, that's what I'm here for. Friends don't let friends overpay for wireless. Say bye-bye to your overpriced wireless plan and switch to Mint Mobile. All plans come with high-speed data and unlimited talk and text delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your phone number along with all your existing contacts. Ditch overpriced wireless with Mint Mobile's deal and get three months of premium wireless service for 15 bucks a month. You know what? I'm in. Where do I sign up? To get this new customer offer and your new three-month premium wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash skeptocrat. That's mintmobile.com slash skeptocrat. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash skeptocrat. $45 upfront payment required, equivalent to $15 a month. New customers on a first three-month plan only. Speed slower, above 40 gigabytes on unlimited plan. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. All right. Thanks, Noah. No problem. Okay, so question about this whole texting thing yeah yeah what's up okay so when somebody sends you a text you have to respond with something like every single time yeah yeah M most people think it's kind of rude to just ignore it right right so like here's the thing that's infinite like when can the text be over well it's not it just you just keep communicating with your friends and family Lol. Did, did I do it right just now? No. And in a grift in the race crime continuum news. Nice. Last, last time That's I was excellent. on the show, uh, <laughs> I told you that my elation at seeing the Tories electorally dismantled was somewhat tempered by the fact that the far right wannabe political party Reform UK had also won some seats, given that they are headed by the former investment banker and answer to the question, what if an ashtray was somehow racist, Nigel Farage. <laughs> Uh, because unfortunately, after seven unsuccessful attempts, Farage, a man who has spent the last few years fronting a financial scam telling people to buy gold, he finally became an elected MP. Nigel Farage looks like emotional constipation, right? Like combined with regular constipation, <laughs> two constipations together. Also, if you spent the last few years telling people to buy gold and you somehow fucked that up, that is next level stupid and evil. There's no need for a scam. Gold went up pretty big over those last few years. <laughs> yeah, it was buy gold, but specifically buy the gold he was selling, which right, was not yeah. worth what he was selling it for. And there was the scam. Yeah, absolutely. But given how many times he's tried and failed to get elected, you'd think that Farage would waste no time in getting to grips with the problems of his new constituency, Clacton-on-Sea, which is one of the most deprived and struggling areas of the country. 
Yeah, the Clactons on A and B are much nicer. <laughs> <laughs> but instead, he spent his time stirring up trouble and leaving the rest of us to clean up his mess. Case in point, after the murder of the three young girls in Southport, he posted a video to Twitter warning that there were reports that the authorities were hiding the truth from us. And when pushed by journalists as to which reports this elected MP was referring to, Farage eventually admitted that his source for those reports was the noted rapist and alleged child trafficker Andrew Tate. What? Yikes. Yeah, that's that's so much worse than I just made it up. Why didn't he just say he made it yeah, up? Yeah, that would have been so much better. Yeah. <laughs> really made Andrew Tate look bad getting cited by that. <laughs> and Farage's video on Twitter has been pinpointed as one of the key sparks that set the country ablaze in race riots around that time, with many people blaming him directly and lots of people even calling them the Farage riots. Wow. Although personally, I'm just annoyed they went with that and not Streets of Farage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sega needs to make that game. <laughs> they do. I would plunk down a quarter to punch him over and over again. Sure, yeah. Absolutely. And if that seemed like an odd way to represent the people of Clacton, bear in mind that just a week after the election, Farage's first act was to fly to the US to visit Donald Trump after the assassination attempt. And that might look like a bit of a self-serving move, especially since we found out that the whole trip cost £32,000 uh, for like the week that he was there and was financed by a cryptocurrency investor and Reform UK donor. But actually, it turns out this was just a matter of local politics, apparently, uh, because according to Farage, the purpose of the trip was, quote, to support a friend who was almost killed and to represent Clacton on the world stage, unquote. Okay. Um, so guys... You're part of the world stage. Could you tell me one thing you now know about Clacton? Uh, isn't that the hole that lizards shit through? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's the uh, the guitar guy who killed his kid, right? <laughs> Jesus. Uh, well, there we go. Money well spent, clearly, yeah. <laughs> Still, while you might not have learned much about Clacton from that post-assassination consolation trip, uh, don't worry, you, you're going to have plenty more opportunities because Farage is actually back in the US right now, appearing as a keynote speaker at the Keep Arizona Free Summit, and he's personally picking up £12,000 for his troubles there. And then next month, he's speaking at a climate change denial conference in America, hosted by the Heartland Institute. And that's going to be his third US trip since he got elected on July the 4th. So oh, he'll have almost spent as much time in America as he has in Clacton by that point. Well, I mean, given that his chief contribution while in the UK it seems to be instigating race riots, you're welcome, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. He gets back to the UK. Yeah, they just like do him there. No instigation needed. It kind of no. <laughs> ruined it for me. I didn't feel it useful. <laughs> So we actually found all of this out via the one silver lining to come from Nigel Farage getting elected. Because as a sitting MP, he now has to declare any gifts he receives and any money he makes. And honestly, Fantastic. it's almost worth electing him just for that fact. Yeah. It's, it's like putting a bell on your cat's collar so it can't sneak up on the birds. <laughs> Yeah, you think the people of Clacton would be interested in electing one or two of our Supreme Court justices as well? <laughs> That'd be great. So in Farage's official register of financial interests, we learned that on top of his £91,000 annual salary plus expenses as an MP, Farage earned £16,000 last year making personalised videos on Cameo. Uh, plus he gets paid £4,000 per per month by The Telegraph for the articles he writes for them, which is £2,000 per article or about £5 per word. Jesus. But like most notably of all, Farage has also paid £98,000 per month from the propaganda channel GB News for what he claims is 32 hours of work each month. Now, Farage has since denied that figure, saying he's not making a million a year or anything. That figure, that £98,000, isn't per month. It covers all of his work for the channel since April. And it's not paid to him, it's paid to his company, which is called Thorn in the Side Limited. But that's not actually that much of a denial. Because, first of all, he's the only employee of that company. Right, yeah. Right, which is an arrangement that is almost certainly done to avoid him a paying higher income tax. He only pays corporate rates and not higher income tax. But also, he hasn't been on air on the channel since stepping down in May to run for election. <laughs> so, uh, 
Okay, so if I had a ch- TV channel, I would pay him not to be on my channel too. So I guess I, I guess this <laughs> might actually add up. So I guess we've had two things confirmed by Farage's financial accounts. Firstly, given how lucrative it can be, being racist or being willing to pretend to be racist is playing your career on easy mode. It really mm. is. But also secondly, if you want to avoid ever seeing Nigel Farage ever again, you should move to Clacton. I, I hear it's on sea. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds lovely, yeah. <laughs> and in rfk owed news, for the first time in my lifetime, a third-party candidate who had no fucking shot of winning realized that all they were going to do was split the ticket, and so they withdrew from the race. And it just so happens it was the guy splitting the fucking nuts ticket because we learned on Friday that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. would be suspending his campaign for the presidency. Or, I, well, actually, I guess what happened is he learned that on Friday. The rest of us had known it since the brain worm thing went public, but he <laughs> seems to have finally sorted it out for himself, and he announced as much on Friday. And just in case anybody was clinging to any hope that he wasn't the worst possible Kennedy, he endorsed Donald Trump on his way out the door. The worst. Oh, God, I like to think that they staged an intervention to tell him he had no chance. You know, he came at the office and just the brain worm is there, like, Robert, you're in a safe place, <laughs> but we need to have a talk. <laughs> Cheryl Hines sitting next to the worm. Yeah. They take each other's hand. Listen, Robert, this is going to be hard to hear. <laughs> <laughs> we have something else to tell you. Now, to be honest, we haven't talked much about Kennedy's presidential campaign, which is a hell of a testament to just how fucked up a campaign cycle this has been, mm. right? Given that it's the least sane third-party candidacy in the history of a country that contained Ross Perot. But yeah, RFK Jr. has long been known as an anti-vaccine quack within the skeptical community, but he really only entered the larger public consciousness during the pandemic when he took advantage of his existing anti-science infrastructure to lead the way on the war against the war against COVID. Um, And then he parlayed that newfound fame into a presidential bid, which he announced on April 19th of last year, uh, which is the anniversary of both the end of the Waco siege and the Oklahoma City bombing. I, I don't know. I, and by the way, it, would, it wasn't like, because I looked this up, it wasn't like that was Earth Day that year or anything. That's just the day he picked. So great fucking start. Hey, hey, you don't know that he wasn't just commemorating the feast day of St. Conrad of Ascoli, the 13th <laughs> century Italian monk. He's a big no, fan. No, he, he could have been doing it. If you can't start your thing on the anniversary of tragic violence in america we're gonna to need to invent some new days sure or something. We won't yeah, no, start okay, no that's <laughs> that's fair so at first kennedy was running for the democratic nomination but when it became clear that that wasn't going to happen he switched to running for uh president as an independent which was equally not going to happen the only times his candidacy made any real headlines was uh when it came to light that the you know, a fucking brain worm starved to death for lack of nutrition inside his head <laughs> when it came to light that his family's nanny had accused him of sexual assault and in the singularly unsummarizable story with the bear. Mm. Right? Like, I sat at my desk for 20 <laughs> fucking minutes looking at those first two examples, trying to come up with another short sentence to rule of three that bit with. But that story defies pith. Right. No story that ends with you going, well, maybe we can make it look like the bear died in a bicycle accident can be explained concisely. (laughs) And the thing is, even though RFK has admitted killing the bear cub in Central Park, Donald Trump still thinks five black guys should get the death penalty for it. He still maintains (laughs) it. (laughs) Okay, and just in case anybody missed the bear story, here's just a quick summary. Here's a day in RFK Jr.'s (laughs) real (laughs) reality life. He saw a dead bear on the side of the road and he was like, pull over. I want to I want to do a thing (laughs) at that point. It doesn't matter what thing you're talking about. Your life has gone horribly awry. Sure has. (laughs) Then he takes a selfie with the bear corpse. Then he gets distracted by falconry for the rest of the day, loses track of time, eats a steak dinner at Peter Luger's. And then he's hurrying to the airport so he doesn't have time to get rid of the bear corpse that he forgot about. (laughs) And he goes to Central Park and he dumps the bear, staging a bike accident that killed the bear as a, quote, prank. On whom? Very unclear. (laughs) And the whole time, 
a worm inside his brain is being like, hey man, dial it back. Let's let's make some <laughs> better choices. The only thing he missed I'm was dying a- of COVID, by the way. You gotta get the vaccine. <laughs> the only thing he missed was putting a cycle helmet on the bear. So it looked like that's how the accident happened. The bear was the one. That's the one thing he missed. That's the only note I've got for him. I, just, I, I, I want to point out that that whole big long thing that Heath just said is the quickest possible summary of that information. <laughs> really? <right? is>. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, okay. TLDR yeah. about that yes, day right. in his real life. Yeah, except, and that's the best possible case of it. That's the case, that's the story that he gives. In my version of the story, he was drunk driving and killed the little fucking bear. Oh, he at the same. clearly Absolutely killed, yes, killed yes, the fucking bear. for sure. Yeah. So, okay, and then he told a Roseanne Barr about it. It was, everything about that was so goddamn weird. <laughs> so, as terrifying a candidate as RFK Jr. was, there was a point where he was pulling at 15% nationally. The guy who just did all that bear shit we just said was pulling at 15% nationally. I would love to think that's because mostly Americans just didn't like Biden and didn't like Trump and all they knew about RFK was that he was a Kennedy we were referring to by his initials, right? Mm. Um, But to be clear, pretty much every living relative in the Kennedy family endorsed Biden and explicitly came out against RFK Jr.'s candidacy because, hey, the more you know about the man, the less inclined you are to vote for him. And that's a universal truth, as we saw with the American populace. The more they got to know him, the more his candidacy tanked, and he was well below 5% in the polls when he pulled the plug on Friday. Yeah, but that still means that like about one in 20 people-ish saw the whole worm thing and the dead bear thing and the sexual assault thing and the anti-vax thing and still thought, that's my guy? Yeah. And, like, yeah. I'd ask how the number was so high, but apparently 160 million people have watched Ricky Gervais's Afterlife. So yeah, mm. they walk among us. It's fucking terrifying. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Sure is. Yeah, sadly, an old friend of mine is a big RFK Jr. fan. He's an <laughs> anti-vaxxer, so obviously. And he said... He's going to be voting for RFK Jr. when I talked to him earlier this year. I texted him the same thing, the same thing after the brain worm, the assault, and the bear story. I texted him, so, who you voting for? <laughs> no response three times in a row. Uh, yeah, no, Marsh, you said they walk among us, and I... T- I'm in South Georgia. I walk among them. It is. It's more terrifying than you may realize. So, all right. So clearly this has been in the making for a while, but we learned last week that before this announcement was official, Kennedy had made overtures to both the Harris and Trump campaigns about a possible position in their cabinet. Now, Harris's campaign answered this question correctly. That is, they did not return his call. But Trump is willing to offer literally anything to literally anyone if it's to his temporary advantage, right? So according to Kennedy's people, Trump agreed to give him some sort of fucking position overseeing matters of national health care <sighs> if he gets elected. Yeah, so, so Trump went from having no health care plan whatsoever to worse than that by a lot. Yeah. The worm walks out for a press conference in the Surgeon General. <laughs> yeah. COVID mask on. Neck, yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, guys, I'm really sorry about that. He got away from me. Uh, I, it's it's good that I killed him and I dumped him in Central Park. I staged the park. <laughs> <laughs> no. As much as I'd like, you think he's got a little tiny bike floating around in his brain there somewhere, too. He's like, oh, no, this will explain it all. (laughs) Sorry. So as much as I'd love to say this doesn't matter, it actually probably does. Okay, so despite the burst of enthusiasm for the Harris campaign, the polling is still super, super tight. And even if a small majority of Kennedy supporters swing Trump's way, it could win him the presidency. And more than a small percentage of Kennedy supporters swing Trump's way, right? At yeah. this point, the overwhelming majority of Kennedy supporters were from the lunatic fringe that, that Trump most appeals to. Now, of course, he also actually can't get his name off the ballot in most of the states. So there's actually a good chance that he's still going to siphon off some potential Trump votes from uninformed voters inclined to vote for Kennedy, which, hey, are the only kind of voters inclined to vote for Kennedy. So maybe we're still all right. We'll see. Okay. All the cases about, like, you have to let me on the ballot. Now they have to, like, completely reverse course and try to Mm -hmm. argue against themselves. (laughs) Yep. I like that. And in be treasonable news, <laughs> Donald Trump announced last week that he'll be hosting a star-studded gala to benefit the criminals who tried to overturn American democracy by force on January 6th of 2021. Yep. By which I mean Donald Trump. He's hosting a benefit for himself. The money they raise is allegedly going to a J6 legal defense fund, which is... 
approximately the same pile of money as the Trump campaign. The event's going to be happening on September 5th at his Bedminster golf course in New Jersey, minutes from Eli Bosnick. We'll see how it goes. And it's called the J6 Awards Gala. Apparently, <laughs> there's awards. They're presenting awards for the treason. <laughs> huh. Yeah, I, th- I think the award for best support is going to go to the plank of wood that was holding up the gallows they were going to hang <laughs> Mike Pence from. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like that guy in the buffalo hat probably has best makeup all to himself there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a big thanks to Nick for sending the link to skeptocratnews at gmail.com. Nick gets to give Eli one long email with notes about comedic delivery. Huh. Eli Bosnick at gmail.com. Yeah, make sure you compare him to someone more famous than him. He loves that, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And by someone more famous, Marsh means Josh Gad. Yes, I do. Yes, yeah. <laughs> So here's the sales pitch for the gala. According to their promotional materials, for $2,500, you get a VIP ticket, including access to the pre-event, premium seating, open bar, but probably, well, liquor's not call, photo ops with the amazing speaker lineup, and something that just says, J Sixers and hors d'oeuvres. What? I don't, I don't know what that means. <laughs> like, maybe they... They pass around defendants along with, like, canapes? It's not clear. I, I don't know what that meant. I think it's that the nibbles are all themed after the Nuremberg defense. You know, just following hors d'oeuvres. Cut! <laughs> Marsh. <laughs> Mwah! Chef's kiss. <laughs> Cheers. And if you want to bump that up to the next level, by the way, you know, you're doing the $2,500 for the VIP ticket, but you want to bump it up for $30,000... You get a VIP table for 12. Oh, shit. But if you're a true, true fan, for $50,000, you get the extra premium VIP table for 12, which includes everything I just mentioned, plus there's a speaker seated at your table. Based on the poster, they have three speakers. Trump, some guy from Jersey named Tony, and Rudolph Giuliani. (laughs) <laughs> and also, they have 14 tables <laughs> remaining for Do they? <laughs> Do they? I, they I, it's so weird how much quicker our Platinum Night events sell out than Trump's. It's so, so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but don't answer yet. For that 50 grand, you also get a plaque. Fuck, yeah. Well, maybe. <laughs> what? It's not guaranteed. <laughs> You're entered into a drawing. What? A hypothetical <laughs> to, plaque, yeah. <laughs> to get a plaque that commemorates Donald Trump's billboard charting song entitled Justice for All. That's a real thing. Donald Trump cut a spoken word single with multiple thematic movements. It's it's technically a concept (laughs) album. You have to listen all the way through. (laughs) It sold enough copies to peak at number one on the billboard music chart for digital sales. Justice for All features Donald Trump reciting the Pledge of Allegiance and a choir of J6 defendants singing the national anthem. Jesus Christ. So it's, it's basically so if you converted a fucking golden sneaker to MP3, huh? <laughs> I would much prefer a digital golden sneaker, an NFT of a golden sneaker <laughs> in this fucking song. Also, did you see that Trump, Rudy, and the other guy are only listed as invited guest speakers? And oh, do you really? Know who, yeah, do you know who you don't describe that way? People yeah. who've actually agreed to speak, the ones who've accepted <laughs> to be invited. Yeah. Now, obviously, yeah, they're Rudy, just speakers. Yeah. They're just, yeah, exactly. So obviously, Rudy will turn up to anything as long as he gets the right address and doesn't turn up to like, the wrong <laughs> location somewhere. But clearly, they haven't actually booked Trump. They've just held the event on his property and hoped he turns up. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I went to their website to do a little research And I found a bottom tier for tickets they didn't mention in the promotional ad. The basic general admission for one person is only $1,500. And I was just about to get Eli the best birthday present ever. But sadly, I checked the calendar. We're going to be in Boston for a live show starting the day of the gala. Very disappointing. That being said, I was about to 
do a prank I can't afford. So yeah. maybe yeah. it's good. That's very much the Eli thing. Yeah. Yeah. So can't afford Eli's it both thing. because that's a <laughs> big chunk of money for me. And also, <laughs> we can't afford to have Eli in jail after his prank. Yeah. As fun as it would be to watch his prank on the national I news. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I will. It might point be worth out, it. No, you make a good point. May, well, yeah. I mean, I will point, point out QD is a lot cheaper than fifteen hundred dollars, and our speakers will actually turn up. That's yeah, like no, guaranteed they're not even just invited. You can invite <laughs> Trump and Rudy Giuliani too, and you can put that on the poster. I'm inviting would, them now. Trump, come yeah. speak for us. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I would like to point out that uh, our Boston show that weekend is sold out and Trump's event isn't. So that's <laughs> nice to me. And in Stuck in the Middlesbrough with You news, I've I've talked a lot about the recent riots here in the UK. I talked about it here on the latest scathing. And I also did an extensive piece on the cause of the riots over on Skeptics with a K. That was a and, great piece, by the way. For, for people who don't listen to Skeptics with a K, definitely listen to Marsha's piece on that. that was really oh, really yeah. Fun. Thank you. Yeah, I was really happy with it. Um, and I think that amount of coverage is justified because I, I honestly think that this was the UK's own January the 6th, but just decentralized around the country and over the course of a week. Yeah, fun fact, our January 6th happened so fast that if you were, like, say, recording an episode of Scathing Atheist that day, you could have pretty much just missed it entirely. Right? We just <laughs> yeah. we all just turned our phones back on afterwards, and we're like, well, what the fuck is everybody freaking out about? <laughs> so, yeah. The first text I read, I was like, you're lying. You have that wrong. That's, yep. we're, there's not a, a whole bunch of people storming the U.S. Capitol? Yeah, Come yeah. on. And you missed it for your politics show. Yeah. Oh, no, it was yeah. a scathing show. It wasn't as, as bad as that. Right, if it was okay, for this yeah. show, that would have been even worse. But, yeah. So, but honestly, the, the parallels are pretty strong, right? It, it happened right after the, a transition of power away from a conservative government who then tried to use it as an excuse to claim the incoming government wasn't legitimate. It was completely fueled by conspiracy theories. It was driven by a sense of white grievance, despite the treatment of rioters by the police being in itself a perfect illustration of white privilege, by the way. Oh, please tell me there's a British equivalent of the fucking Buffalo Shaman guy. <laughs> <laughs> Just Nigel Farage on a horse doing the brave heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fag in one hand, pint in the other. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there were, there were people vandalising and looting. Um, in the US, it was looting from your Capitol building. And in our case, it was from similarly iconic national institutions, like the guy who stole a tray of sausage rolls from Greg's, or the guy who looted <laughs> bath bombs out of Lush. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, in your own head, how do you connect those dots? Right. How do you get so mad at immigrants that you steal bath bombs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're taking our fucking jerk. Ooh, balsam and sandal. <laughs> <laughs> I am looting this lush. So we even inexplicably had our own example of white people misappropriating Native American culture, not in the form, sadly, of a shaman, but in the form of a middle-aged couple from Middlesbrough on Teesside, on the River Tees. So fun fact, that's actually basically where I grew up in the area around the River Tees. That's kind of where I came from. Um, so I can actually give you this in the accent that I had growing up. This is a direct quote from the lady. <clears throat> it's our country and we're getting pushed out. I understand now how the native Indians felt in America now because that's what that's what the white man did went and pushed them out. Only what? it's the white man getting pushed out of this country. Oh God! So, Jesus. so won't someone think of the downtrodden white people of Teesside getting forced <laughs> off their land? You know, it's it's the trail of teas. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Only Michael Marshall can ah. make a genocide joke feel quaint. Well done, sir. <laughs> More That's... chef's kiss emojis, Marsh. <laughs> <laughs> so while this might have been our own slow motion January the 6th, we can at least take some comfort from the fact that the legal response has been actually swift motion, with many of the rioters, including the guy who looted Lush, already arrested and sentenced which is inevitably playing into the hands of conspiracy theorists who are trying to pretend there's some kind of totalitarian clampdown underway in the UK. And, and for what it's worth, the media have made telling those lies so much easier with a series of utterly genuinely stupid editorial decisions when reporting these sentences. Wow. White nationalist violence and major conservative media sources lying about it? I can't even imagine. Marsh. I cannot. What kind even of shithole country do you guys have? What is happening in the UK? Not even live? conservative, though. This is the problem. It's not even conservative media doing it. I can understand it from them. But for one example, there was a headline in the BBC that declared that a rioter called David Notley was, quote, jailed after chanting at police and explained that he got a 20-month sentence for yelling, quote, you're not English anymore, at the police. 
And that story was quickly spreading around Twitter by idiots crying that free speech is under attack by the Labour government and that you can go to prison these days just for saying you're English. Obviously, that isn't what actually happened. And if you bothered to read beyond the terrible headline, you'd have learned that David Notley was threatening the police and yelling racial abuse about Muslims. And you'd also learn that he was doing that while out on remand from a 20-year sentence for drug smuggling. And it turns out that being part of a race riot was against the conditions of his parole, oddly huh. enough. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, it's gotten to where you can't even shout fire in a theater to your firing squad. Where will it end? <laughs> so, yeah, quick note for headline writer of the BBC. When it comes to writing headlines about a fucking race riot, maybe lead with the worst offence that someone's convicted of. You know, your headline about John Wilkes Booth shouldn't have read, Man Criticised for Interrupting Theatre. <laughs> <laughs> and finally tonight, in pill highs and pillows news. <laughs> the greatest thing that ever happened in the history of American political commentary is and always will be the Four Seasons total landscaping thing. And the second funniest thing is and always will be the time that Ben Shapiro's wife told him a wet vagina is a disease. It's really amazing that we got to be alive for both. But the title of the third funniest thing is still up for grabs, and it may just have been claimed by the 12-year-old fucking hero who totally dismantled Mike My Pillow Lindell when he tried to sneak into the Democratic National Convention. Oh, it's the best. They should have just let him come to the convention, but you have to be inside a claw machine with stuffed animals. Oh, there you and go. Yeah, done it. Right. We could have had Mike Lindell in a claw machine. He's good at that. So it all started when Mike, the, the man who has the descriptor disgraced pillow magnate all to himself, decided to go to undercover at the DNC. Now, this is a fairly common thing uh, for, for pundits to do. You go behind enemy lines, right, and then share videos of where you try to do gotchas to various well-known members of the opposition party. And, and based on the videos I saw coming out of the DNC, it was far more often going the other way. Right, the shitlords could not make a full lap around the convention center without three randos from TikTok destroying them. <laughs> uh, but nobody got quite as destroyed as Lindell, who I should point out was so committed to this bit that he shaved off his signature snot slug of a mustache to do it. <laughs> he did, yeah. <laughs> and he loves that mustache. He could have just worn a COVID mask, but apparently there's like a, a commandment yeah, about right, that in the Bible. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> So as you have almost certainly forgotten, Mike Lindell has his own bullshit right-wing Twitter clone called Frank Speech, uh, which you can find at frankspeech.geocities.blogspot.org forward slash patriot mobile or something. <laughs> hey, that's unfair. They have an app. That app has a 4.5 star rating in the App Store. Oh, based on 238 reviews, which is not a lot of reviews for a social media site. Really? Uh, yeah, I read some of the reviews. They're great. My favourite of the reviews, right, it might be the five-star five, star, five star review, which raved that the app, quote, can be illegible on a varied devices. <laughs> oh, that was a five-star That was a five-star review. There was another five-star review, which absolutely gushed, quote, the audio and the people speaking are out of sync, making it hard to watch the app. <laughs> Still five stars. Uh, yeah, and then there was the other five-star review for this social media app, which simply says, quote, <laughs> please add feature for us to be able to post on social media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that gem of an app right there. So that's the thing he shaved off his fucking facial foliage for, to, quote, go undercover at the DNC and deliver frank speech viewers undercover footage, end quote. All 238 of them. <laughs> uh, so that's undercover footage, by the way, of a thing that had, like, overcover footage that was freely available <laughs> right. and nationally televised. He walks in, I'm looking for some pizza and the fuck dungeon. Anybody know where the pizza and fuck dungeon are? We all know that that's here, right? Right, wink. Uh, but among the footage he chose not to share from the event was the absolute ass-kicking that he took at the hands of 12-year-old content creator Noah DeBrasco. Uh, and that's Noah, K-N-O-W-A, by the way. So yes, his name is even more clever of a use of Noah than mine. Okay, but is his pun pseudonym so good it can be extended into an equally great pseudonym for his wife? No, because again, he's 12 years old. He doesn't have he's a wife, 12, yeah. yeah, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. So... In the video that some other motherfucker shared, which will absolutely be linked on the show notes, you've got to see this shit, uh, he's 
First of all, he's dressed like he's about to give Dennis Nedry a fake can of shaving cream, right? He's got the sunglasses <laughs> and the hat, the whole night. Yeah, it's so great. He only needed to throw on like a long trench coat and he would have successfully disguised himself as two children trying to sneak into an R-rated movie. <laughs> I love that he thinks the fedora and the indoor sunglasses, yes. you know, complete the disguise. <laughs> it's so silly. He might as well be wearing the Groucho Marx glasses, but with like a, a little rectangle of skin colored plastic over his mustache. <laughs> it's so stupid. So, yeah. So in the clip that's being shared, we cut to a mid argument where he's just he's just straight up yelling at the top of his lungs to a perfectly calm 12 year old boy. <laughs> he screams for like 25 seconds about a Georgia judge who supposedly just ruled that there were hundreds of thousands of missing votes in Georgia in the 2020 election, sourcing that lie to, quote, your Georgia newspapers, end quote. And once he's yelled himself out of breath, the kid goes, quote, so your source is trust me, bro. That's your source. End it's quote. The best. <laughs> and no, it's almost the best. The best is that he then just walks the fuck away. <laughs> he turns right around. Oh, it's so good. The walk away is so brutal. Like it's one thing to lose an argument to a twelve-year-old child, but it's so much worse for that child to realize that you've lost it before you do. <laughs> <laughs> Kid's like, wait, 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 you still don't know you lost. I got to make this more clear. <laughs> he picks up Lindell in a bear hug, drops him on the floor. Okay, mic drop, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for making me famous, by the yeah, way. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, hey, hats off to Noah. Well done. I, I can't speak for all left-wing content creators named Noah, but as far as I'm concerned, you are at the top of the rankings right now, and I'm just happy to share a chart with you, dude. <laughs> Such a good job. And on that amazing note, we're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions, thanks to Michael Marshall, and thanks to all the listeners who liked us and followed us on all the various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening, and please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, you can send us gifts of money at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like Michael Brandt, Pax Angli, Bogo D. Booney, Zipple, Anti-Tech Luddite, looking forward to Eli falling for BC again. Freddie B. from Fredericksburg. Phil Holt. Glenn Campbell. Farhan Jasani. Chris. Candace Cole. Blunt Force Llama. Lou Chichi 17. Steven, your friendly neighborhood union lawyer. And a DM who just once would like to make up an NBC's name that my players don't make fun of. These wonderful people are the essence of of unbridled happiness like a like a dog sticking their head out the window of a car and beaming with joy about the air just existing and we love you and whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge check out our brother and sister shows the scathing atheist god awful movies dnd minus and citation needed Available in all the podcast places. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He is the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. I love when the story is so fucking nuts, you don't have to... You can just describe it in the bullet. I just yeah, said, said what's going to happen. just said the fucking no thing gag needed. that is going to happen. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2024. All rights reserved. Mike Tirico here with some of the 2024 Team USA athletes. What's your message for the team of tomorrow? To young athletes, never forget why you started doing it in the first place. You have to pursue something that you're passionate about. Win, lose, or draw, I'm always going to be the one having a smile on my face. Finding joy in why you do it keeps you doing it. Be authentic, be you, and have fun. Joy is powering Team USA during the Olympic and Paralympic Games. Comcast is proud to be bringing that inspiration home for the team of tomorrow.